And that's a cool way to do it as well. It's like Pavlovian conditioning. It's what we do to dogs. Dogs are cool. Why can't we be like dogs? No one talks about this on the internet. And if they do, let me know in the comments below and I will go and give them a round of applause. But we're sometimes so focused on what should I be eating and how should I be training and what do I need to do here? Which, of course, is important. That's the soul and the base of any fitness plan. But sometimes people aren't enjoying it. And they're like, how do I start enjoying lifting weights? And how do I start enjoying working out? And nobody actually gives them an answer. And that seems obvious. People go, just go find something you enjoy. But no, there's this idea that you've got to go to the gym and lift weights. And maybe you want to find a way to like you, right? That's the key. You don't just want to give up. You know, you have the motivation. You have the drive. You just want to have the extra passionate thing floating around your head. So that is what we are going to talk about today. My name is Simon Miller. If you're brand new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you're a regular subscriber and a regular viewer of the channel, I'm sorry I've been away all week. I got food poisoning, and I will do a video about food poisoning and how it absolutely screws up your diet and makes you lose a stone in, like, a day. It's rubbish, but let's do this list. Ten things to help you enjoy working out. Number ten, set yourself goals. Seems so obvious, seems so likely that people would do that, but they don't. I see it all the time. Some people come up to me and say, Simon, if I've done, like, chest and tries, right, whatever, last week, what, you know, what do I do this week to try and better what I did last week. I'm like, well, just look at your book or your, your phone, whatever you, you track your workouts with and try and beat it. You challenge yourself, you know, create create a little game for yourself. And like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even think to do that. And we all think we can remember what we lifted last week, but you don't know what's going to happen over the next you know, seven days, what your brain's going to do. Brain is crazy to begin with. So that's absolutely something you should employ. Like, for example, I hate doing cardio, right? I hate it. So what I started to do is every 60 seconds, I would count how many calories I was burning. So let's say in my first minute, I burnt 40 calories, whatever. In minute two, I'd be like, right, now you've got to burn 41 calories. Now you've got to do 42 calories. It's essentially progressive overload. And that's what you can do in the gym too. So if you're benching 100 kilograms, next week, try and bench 102.5 kilograms. And so many people laugh at those little plates. Those little plates are gold mines. Because if you can go from 100 to 102.5 to 105 to 107.5, you know, whatever increments you want to jump up in, then in six months, you're going to be lifting loads more. And this doesn't mean go crazy. It doesn't mean I'm going to bench 250 kilograms. You'll get to a plateau or you'll hit a plateau, but that's when you can change it up. Maybe you try and do more reps. Maybe you take off some of the weight and see how many reps you can do and you can start again. But treat it like a video game almost. Can you beat your high score from last week? And not only is that going to hopefully make it more fun, but you'll also see better gains and better improvement and better progress because you're teaching your body to lift more more, therefore you're gonna get stronger, so on, so forth. Number nine, take some pre-workout, right? This is a dumb one. I've tried to go serious one, dumb one, serious was dumb one. This is a dumb one. It's, it is gonna make you enjoy your workout more because we've talked about this in other videos. Pre-workout makes you feel good. Pre-workout gives you focus. If you take caffeinated ones, I don't, but if you take caffeinated ones, you're gonna have all this energy. You gotta be careful of the crash. You don't wanna feel rubbish when you come back to the gym. But, you know, essentially, essentially pre-workout is just taking drugs. Let's not pretend otherwise. And those drugs just happen to be legal and they make you feel well good. It's not for everybody, but you may as well give it a go. If you're looking for something just to give you a kick up the ass and the, some people don't like the feeling, but I think, you know, you we will when you're lifting weights. And it'll make your veins pop out and your muscles look bigger, even though they're not actually bigger. Just try it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But it, when you get a good one that you kind of gel with, it's quite entertaining. Number eight, figure out how to make your post-workout meal really nice or at least something you can look forward to. Genuinely, let's say you, you decided you're going to go to the gym regardless. It's not necessarily something that's massively popular on your list of things to do, but you decide, how hey, I'm going to keep going to the gym. If you know you get to eat an awesome meal afterwards, two thumbs up. Maybe you're training for that because you know what you're going to get. Like I have cereal after I work out. I make sure I balance it into my, my calories throughout the day. But of course, it's good to get uh, sort of, you know, a high... Uh, sugary, what, what's the right word I'm looking for, but a high carbohydrate meal when you're done that's going to, you know, get in your system as soon as possible because then whatever protein you drink will go to your muscles. So you want to restore your energy levels using carbohydrates. So that's why it's better to do something that's high on the GI scale, but you want to make sure your proteins go into your muscles. Cereal does that wonderfully. And I love cereal. Cereal is the best. I'm one of those guys that's like, oh, I have a bowl of cereal, then I've had 92. But you can, if you're, long as you're training hard enough, as long as you make sure you work it out, you can figure out how much cereal you can have. And then maybe when you're at the gym and you're thinking about doing one more set, you go, I'm going to do that one more set because I want that bowl of Cocoa Pops. doesn't mean go crazy. Don't eat 200 grams of cereal. <laughs> like you got to be, you got to be smart with it. But it is something you can do. Some people have sweets. Some people have Haribo. Uh, chocolate doesn't really work because it's really high in fat. But you can Google it right now and find all these really excellent, like nice quote unquote treats you can have. And that's a cool way to do it as well. It's like Pavlovian conditioning. It's what we do to dogs. Dogs are cool. Why can't we be like dogs? So, <laughs> you know, you, you worked out hard 
and then you get a treat. Number seven, go with a friend. Make it a social experience. I mean, it does drive me nuts sometimes in gyms when you've got bros hanging around a bench and treating it like a shelf and they got their shaker on there, they got their bag on there. I'm like, do you think you're at home? What are you gonna put on there next? A speaker? I need to lay on it and lift weights. But if you go with your friend and you treat it seriously, there's nothing wrong with that. And in between rest sets, you can catch up and they can encourage you. So that's like, it's just look, it's always nice hanging out with people. That's like video games, right? That old thing that people used to do when they review games, they go, oh, it's better because it got co-op in it. Of course it is. Everything better is, everything's gonna be better. If it's got co-op in it, that includes a gym. Shouldn't have banged the table. Number six, realize you don't have to go crazy just because Instagram or social media said so. There's another one I see all the time. People are like, Miller, I don't enjoy the gym because I'm getting up at half four in the morning to try and get it in. And I'm like, well, do you have to get to work at a certain time? And they say, yes. And I go, when? They're like, like half nine. And so I'm like, well, why are you getting up at half four? What are you doing in the gym? You're just like laying in there. And they're like, oh no, I see all these people saying I have to get up early. You don't. Just work out what the hell your day entails and how much time you can have before you need to go to work and get up at the appropriate time. If you like getting up early, absolutely sweet. But don't buy into the crazy, especially Instagram, the crazy, I talk about all the time, but the crazy Instagram nonsense. You're on Instagram and they see this guy who's going like, what's your excuse? I got up at 2.30 in the morning, you rubbish weak person. Yeah, my excuse was I just didn't want to go at that time. I wanted to sleep. Sleep's really important. So don't buy until that. Find your own routine. Your own routine is perfect. Number five, plan in a weekly cheat meal. Everyone goes crazy when you talk about cheat meals. Look, figure out again what works best for you, but it's important to have them. If you're going to have six and a half days where you're staying on a plan and you're staying on a diet and you're sacrificing things that you want and you know you're ignoring cravings, it's going to hit you up here sooner or later. Nobody's perfect. Everybody cheats on their diet. That's the other, that's the other thing. Everybody cheats on your diet. Do not beat yourself up when you cheat on your diet. Just accept it. If you've got a trainer or a coach, make sure you tell them and do your best to balance it out throughout the week. But make sure you plan it in. Saturday night, whenever, is good for you. Because it means on Thursday, when you look at that bag of Doritos, you're like, man, I'd smash that bag of Doritos. You can just say, well, that's okay. You can smash that bag of Doritos two days later. Hold off. It will give you a dangling character chase. Again, like the gold progressive overload stuff. But make sure you plan it in. Make sure you don't feel guilty about that either. Understand that it is okay. Understand there is kind of some health benefits to it. We'll get into that on another video. And don't overdo it either. That's the other thing, because then you're going to feel bad and you're going to screw up here. But if you've got it in there, it's just going to make you enjoy your working out a bit more because you're eating healthy, you're going to feel good, and then you get to indulge and so on and so forth. Number four, listen to music, listen to a podcast, listen to whatever works. Take the headphones out and listen to the steel and the metal of the gym. The, you know, the reason people listen to music, especially when they're running or training or lifting weights, is because it gives you the adrenaline, it gets you going. And that may, that may be the way that you finally start to build up a relationship with the gym that you like. Maybe there's a, a, a podcast series that you listen to once a week, start listening to it in the gym. And I know someone will go, but you're not going to get, you're not going to push, you'll push out more if you listen to blah, blah, whatever. Just do what works for you. That's the key. And other comments, me, me. But that, it really, really is important that you do that. And I kind of go from one to the other, depending on what I'm working out, depending depending on my state of mind, whether I'm really tired or I'm really awake. Uh, if I put some metal music on, I know I'm gonna go for it, but sometimes I think, oh, maybe I need to take a step back today and I'll throw on a radio station, I'll throw on a podcast. I'll make sure that I treat that as maybe a bit of a deload session. We'll talk about deload sessions another time too. But you wanna go, and again, you just wanna have these little tidbits that get you excited. So if there's a true crime podcast you're well into and you're desperate to hear the next episode, if you say, oh, I'll do it when I train legs, then you're gonna go train legs. Because you think, sweet, I get to do that podcast, which is better than not training legs. Number three, save your favorite exercises till last. It stands to reason, right? Legs, again, one that everybody helps. Training legs sucks. Lunges, worst exercise ever to be invented by human beings. Awful, hate them. Every week my brain goes, we don't have to do them, Simon. But you do, because I know how good they are. So what do I do? I structure it so I make sure I'm doing lunges right at the start, but not, not at the start, but in towards the beginning of my workout. Legs are actually really as a bad example because I don't like any leg exercises. Calves are all right, I suppose, but I have terrible calves. Whatever it be though, say bench and chest and stuff. What do I not like doing when it comes to bench? Well, I quite like all of it. You take my point, I'm rambling and I'm raving here, but if there are certain things that you enjoy doing, put them at the end of your session for all the reasons we've just talked about. Because then you won't get to your end of the session and go, I'm not gonna do lunges because now I'm exhausted and technically I've done enough where I can go home. No, you go, I wanna do it because I enjoy that one and I've done all the crap ones now, so I feel like I earned it. Again, another great way to trick your brain, get those endorphins flowing. 
So many people don't do it. They think, oh, I'll get here, I'll do all that. No, 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 no. And you'll get some people that say, oh, you should legs again. You should squat first and you should do this. And yes, there are certain compound movements at the beginning of your workout are going to be better because you're going to have more energy. But ultimately, if you know the different training regime works for you and is going to get you more motivated and getting you enjoying the gym more, then you can just change it up as and when, you know, as, as and when you need to. But right now, when you're looking for that motivation, great thing to do. Number two, when you don't want to go, just go for 30 minutes or go for half the time that you would do usually. So say that you're meant to do an hour of cardio, right? Just go and do 30 minutes. Say you said you were going to do an hour and 10 minute leg session. Go do 30 minutes. Because again, if the alternative is you don't go at all, go and do half. And you may just find when you are there and you get into the groove and you've got your podcast on, you've got your music on and you're planning your cheat meal and you've got all your favorite exercises towards the end, then you go, I may as well stay. I'm here now already. It's far better than sitting on your couch and eating that bag of Doritos we talked about earlier. But unfortunately, what we do as human beings is we go, oh, I only went for half the time. That's okay. It's okay. The gym isn't mandatory. The gym is something that you should look forward to and you should try and try and enjoy. So don't ever, again, it goes back to the whole thing. Don't beat yourself up that you only did half. Go, sweet, I did half and I didn't even want to do half today. And number one, just to sort of summarize everything we said, don't beat yourself up when you go off plan. So you know, if you do decide not to go, don't worry about it. If you do eat a bunch of crap, don't worry about it. If you decide to give up the gym entirely and go and do something else, don't worry about it. Figure out the thing that is going to make you happy about lifting weights, especially in 2020, because we're in this culture now, which is kind of crazy to me, because when I used to do, you know, I'd lifting weights for ages, and when I started doing it, it was kind of frowned upon, like, oh, you do that? You drink this strange powder in a plastic cup? And you're like, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's not like that now. Like, it's perfectly normal to see somebody drinking a protein shake on a train or in a cinema or on a bus. It's just everybody's doing it. And that way, there is a sense of guilt. Well, I haven't gone to the gym. I only went to the gym twice a day. Well, that's all right. There's another thing you can do too. Maybe you only go to a traditional gym twice a week, but you go to classes on. So you go Monday and Friday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you do classes. Maybe you take weekends off. Maybe you go to boxing, MMA. I'm not going to do my usual list. But yeah, just beating yourself up is the surefire way to stop going to the gym because you'll start associating those guilty feelings and those negative feelings with training when actually you're just getting inside your own head, which we all do. My word, we do it every single day. So try not to make that connection if if you can give yourself a time off give yourself plenty of space to relax and accept that life is life and you're never going to be able to handle it and sometimes you're going to have down days and you won't you're not going to want to lift weights and ultimately again you won't connect the two and you'll keep it in a positive place i guess that's what i'm trying to say keep the gym in a positive place and if any of these things i can talk you know, i've talked about now will lead you to the promised land and hopefully that's a good thing. That's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do subscribe. Like I said, like, share, and subscribe. Make no money from YouTube, but I have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Link down there. There's loads of stuff you can get. You can just throw a dollar in to really help me, which does really help me. But you can get postcards. You can get t-shirts. Uh, you can come on one of my podcasts. Also, there's going to be exclusive videos up there soon too. Uh, if you're our Patreon member, keep an eye out for them, but I'll make sure I advertise them once they go up. I think that's it. Have a great weekend.